This is Michael Scott Hollish, and I am here with John A. Light. Uh, John's been on this show a few times. I've been on his show a couple times. And recently, we both worked on the National Geographic Channel docuseries, Narco Wars the Mob. I worked on the first episode as an associate producer. Uh, that was on Carmine Galante and uh, featured uh, mine and John's friend, Frank Fiordolino. And John was on the third episode in the docu-series that touched on the uh, Gene Gotti heroin uh, distribution connection. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today, uh, the projects that John has uh, currently and the projects he has coming up. He has a new book that is out that I'm excited to... Uh, let him talk about a little bit. Before we jump into that, it has been brought to my attention that there has been uh, some, I guess, some attacks on John on the internet, which is nothing new. Obviously, John, uh, the more successful that you get, the more attention you get. And all attention, whether it's good or bad, is actually, I guess, good attention because that means people are talking about you. So it would be fair to uh, give you an opportunity if you wanted to respond to anything. Well, I think that uh, no matter who you are, whether it's an athlete, it's sports, if you're um, uh, an actor in movie theaters or a, a jockey or whatever position, when you become public, uh, the more you're going to get attacked. And as you get more successful, um, like my situation, I did GQ magazine and I did Forbes magazine. And then I did a three-part series with Netflix and uh, Reels and, again, like you said, Nat Geo. So I said the more of these projects I do and the more public I do, I become. I just did a, an interview with ESPN. So these things are going to happen, and my reaction is to take the higher ground and just move forward and leave them where they are. Well, you're totally right. The more exposure you get on these projects, obviously people – are becoming aware of your name, your story, you know, other gentlemen who are in these projects, their story. So obviously it's it's uh, giving you more exposure. And as you said, the more exposure you get, the more positive reaction you're going to get. And with the positive comes the negative, And that's just all part of it, of being a public personality, and which you are now. So, you know, that's that. I mean, with my channel, I, I've never been interested in clickbait, I'm more interested in the history of things, so I approach it from that angle, which, you know, we've done with you in the past, giving you an opportunity to share your story and various projects and everything, and that's really what I'm interested in, and uh, for anyone that it would ever ask me if I stand behind, you know, your history, the one thing that I 100% stand behind, which I got to know you for, is uh, your activities in Tampa, because I'm definitely have researched the history of Tampa and uh, you know I know a lot of people that worked with you indirectly and some of your former partners that worked with you directly and there is no doubt on anything uh, you've always been a gentleman with me and so uh, you know I always want to help you promote the projects you have going on that's really what I wanted to do today so you said that you uh, you did an interview with ESPN earlier yeah, I did one with ESPN. Actually, we were talking about off uh, off the interview about Cigar City magazine that I did years ago in Tampa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, one of the guys from ESPN uh, read it and was interested in me and started following my uh, career now and, and some of my old stuff that uh, I got the attention for the wrong reason, negative reasons. Well, we were talking about how I changed my life and helping kids and why I'm so aggressive. And, and that's what brought me to the fourth book that I just released called uh, Mafia International with John A. Light. So th that's my latest project that uh, not it's not uh, it's also it's a little twist to it because I brought in ex gangsters from Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey and uh, black mafia that uh, did uh, chapters in the book also on their perspective of the street and their perspective of me involvement with me during uh, my criminal life in the, in the street. Okay, so these are individuals, some of them that had an interaction with you in that life. Exactly. Some of the guys that uh, spoke to 
I have a, a, a co-author that authored the book. Lou Romano was authored mm-hmm. about 15 other books. And uh, what he did was interview these guys and they did the chapter about me and their involvement with me. And some of the guys you're very familiar with, who's a personal friend of mine since I'm a young guy. His father was one of the major bosses with Albert Anastasia. It was uh, Fat Andy Ruggiano and his son Anthony, who uh, till today works with me. Not only in uh, Nat Geo did he do and other things right. with me, he but sure did. he also uh, we also worked together in conjunction helping kids. And Anthony's been working with uh, ex uh, addicts and alcoholics for thirty years now, so he has a long track record of helping kids and people. And also his perspective of uh, living and being raised by a boss of the mafia, Fat Andrew Ruggiano, around Murder Inc. and Albert uh, Anastasia is is a uh, a very unique perspective in the mob world. That's awesome. I didn't know you guys were working together. I, I do know Anthony's story, and he's actually a success story because he battled addiction and he was able to overcome it. And I, I think that's awesome that he is out now helping others to do the same. I never really asked you this, but uh, are you ever going to do a book on your Tampa stuff. Well, actually, we were just talking about this with a with a, a new writer. Mm-hmm. On you know, obviously, I stayed with uh, the Scaglionis. I had interaction with the Traficani family, that were uh, the, the major source between Tampa and Cuba. So we're going to do something on that. That'll be the next project. You know, everybody knows I'm busy. I stay busy. I'm aggressive, and I have another film that's coming out in September on Brazil and on the run. That'll be out, uh, I believe, also a Nat Geo project, and I think Disney Plus. So, uh, you know, once those are released, I start mm-hmm. filming in Spain uh, with Klaus, that was also in prison with me. Right. And he's from Denmark, and he's part of one of the chapters in my newest book, uh, Mafia International. So it'll give the perspective of a, a, a major boss drug dealer from uh, Europe, and we're doing a project called Nordic Narcos. Guys are playing... They're playing the parts of me and Klaus, and we're consulting on it. So it'd be like a reenactment of uh, an actual, right? Exactly. Right. And uh, we're also involved in a final chapter out of Italy with Mm -hmm. you guys and and Thomas and uh, Nicholas Pelleggi, who's an executive producer on that ten part series. Right. So there's some good projects coming down the the, down the lane, and uh, one other one I'm I'm in the middle of uh, with the Latanza heist. Very cool. Daniel Simone, the writer of that book, has uh, been working with me in the last uh, six months to a year mm-hmm. on, a, on a new project about the Latanza. So there's a lot of stuff going in the pike. And, you know, I try to stay busy. That's why I don't, I'm trying not to feed into any of this negative stuff. I want to feed into the positive like Anthony Ruggiano does. Because we had some uh, jaded and, and past and some trouble past with violence, jails, drugs, alcohol... Hopefully, while we're in working in these projects, we, we're also helping kids save their lives. So, right. uh, like I said, Anthony's a unique individual, i got to tell you. Since yes, he is. I was around with that family. They were great people to me, and, and we, we, we maintained that relationship. So, it's, it's uh, you know, we talk about baseball, and they were my coaches, my boxing coaches. So, you know, i got a, a unique relationship with them for many years. Right, absolutely. And, you know, the best thing you can do is, which I've noticed you have been doing recently is just to focus on these large projects you have coming up I, the last two shows that you did on uh, on your channel have definitely worked towards the message that you're that you're working towards so you know I think the more of that stuff that you know that's all you can do is just focus and just push the negative out because it has no bearing on anything that you're doing anyway none of these people well, I, have, I, have you a, know. I have a new show coming out next week it'll be on pro wrestling and one of the guys that were involved with us and he'll talk about Hulk Hogan and you know and I speak uh, well of him uh, he was involved with my old partner Cam before Cam passed away mm-hmm. uh, Hulk Hogan and owned a, a, a bar out of Ebor City called Hogs mm-hmm. and uh, Hulk Hogan's son unfortunately ended up in a Pinellas County Jail where I was at right. the time he was a young good kid unfortunately street racing and, yep. and you know it, it's an unfortunate thing and this is Really, some of the things you got to talk about with these kids is, you know, when you, if you get some of these guys, these negative guys talking uh, childish and nonsense on the Internet, 
I mean, that's the new world, right? The internet, and they can do what they want. But obviously, if they were busy with their lives and positive projects, they wouldn't have time to be bothering me. It doesn't right. matter what they have to say one way or another. Um, they would be doing something positive. So obviously, they're, they're living a negative life. Let them live that way. I mean, I can't get annoyed at these guys because, you know, they're going to do this, whether they do it to me or somebody else. These are these are those type of people that bottom feeders and you got to let them let them bottom feed just ignore them and the and, and look john it's not just you i mean i had for you know a while back i think i told you just in our conversations and i didn't ever respond to it publicly but you know the goddies came after me even that's just how people are going to be you know if, if they you know they want to attack you it's you know the accuracy doesn't matter you know and, and and this i will say the accuracy of what's true about me or what is it isn't going to change the facts of the Gotti life, right? So what, no matter what I am or I aren't, doesn't change what they are or aren't. So, it, you know, factually speaking, it does not matter what I ever I did because he can't change the facts that he, that he was a cooperator, and that he was an informant or whatever. And he can't change the fact that when his dad got beat up in jail, as an older man, and there's nothing against his father for getting beat up, but he was an older man. Right. Johnson, when he beat when he beat up his dad in prison, was home a year and a half later. The Gotti's had the chance to be those gangsters they want to talk about, and they did nothing to that guy. In the same situation, whether Sammy Gravano's wrong or right in testifying against Gotti, it doesn't matter. Gotti, again, had the chance to take care of business and kill Sammy Gravano. He never did that either. You know, you want to be gangster, then play the role. And, and, and act on those parts, but you can't have it both ways, become an informant and attack me. Because right. You don't have to say much more than that. It doesn't matter at this point. Right. Let it go and live his life and enjoy his life. It doesn't matter if I, uh, I am a serious guy, I wasn't a serious guy, if I was a rat, I wasn't a rat, uh, what I chose to do or not. The facts are the facts. It's never going to change what he did by cooperating and what he didn't do by not taking care of business for his father. When, when his father got hurt, you know, really got hurt bad in prison and he suffered in jail, he died there terribly and he didn't do anything to Sammy. So, so you got to stop and, and say to yourself, you failed on both counts as far as in your eyes, what it takes to be a gangster in your father's eyes. And he knows as well as I do, um, his dad would have killed him for this behavior. And that's not important really. I mean, he needs to just get over it and live with himself. I don't think it, he should really care what you have to say. It's like he should just move on should with his life, period. <laughs> you know? He's not part you know? of my life. You right. know, I have a good life. You know, when I go home to my children, he's not part of it. When I go to work, he's not part of it. Right. So, same with him, with me. He shouldn't really care what I have to say. Right. You know, because yeah, to I'm each not his part own. of his life. Absolutely, so 100%. So, when he gets past that and enjoys his life, then... It's just at one point you got to say, well, when is it going to be enough? When are you going to say to yourself, I'm going to just enjoy my life and live it and, and go through some project, whatever you want to do to make you happy. I don't I don't think he's on the same agenda as me with youth groups, with inner cities, uh, Brownsville, Brooklyn. Everybody knows they just had two gentlemen on again. And whether we agree on every topic uh, about Brownsville or any other neighborhood, we're trying to do something good for those kids. That was a really you good know? segment, by the way. You know, there's some people are against me on it, and I'm just like, and some of it I'm saying to myself, I'm not there to attack the gentlemen for their opinion to some of it, because some of it I, I disagree on right. some of the things right. Absolutely. they said, and some of it I do agree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, every, everybody knows my stance on law enforcement, you know, that I back them. Right. And I think, like anything, there's only a small percentage of them aren't, you know, doing the right thing, but I think the majority of them are doing the right thing. And I don't think that we should segregate Law, police officers, like I think uh, Mike said at one time, we should have more uh, people of color in those neighbors. I disagree with that. And that's my opinion. Everybody should be together, not in discourse. So um, I'm right. always going to believe what I believe. But listen, the good thing about our country is everybody can agree to disagree. So Absolutely. And respect each other, you know, and I got a lot of respect for those guys. They, right. they, do, they dedicate their lives to helping kids. And, right. and, and that's really what I talk about. And all those officers that are, are good guys shouldn't be attacked because of some of the bad ones. But yet, we don't talk enough about the the killings that go on in these neighborhoods, whether it's black on black, uh, Spanish on Spanish. And we know those numbers are astronomical. 
Oh yeah, I mean Chicago. Chicago, Chicago has the strictest gun laws in Illinois, you know, Cook County, and um, they, it's like a war zone, you know. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to have open borders, you're going to have a million illegal guns coming in. Right. If you're going to have open borders, and you believe in COVID, you're going to have COVID spreading like crazy. You're going to have open borders. You're going to have drugs coming in. But if you look at the statistics, legal guns are not used in crimes of murder. Very, 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 very low percentage. It's coming from the illegal guns, not the legally bought guns, or legally bought guns that were stolen from the legal owners. But right. The legal owners right. themselves are not using guns. So this is a false narrative by anybody that's trying to talk about this. Well, what they're doing is disarming law-abiding citizens. And, they want to protect themselves. And, and whether it's a stringent anti-gun area or not, criminals are always going to be able to obtain weapons. But yet the well, law-abiding citizens would be... I was a criminal be... using a gun, so I'm right. a prime example. Right, You know, exactly. I could have did it the right way, and I didn't want to do it the right way because I had crime on my mind. Right. And so, you know, I'm the first person to out speak and say, listen, I was a criminal. I could have used guns all over the place, bought them all over the place. But now that the, the administration making it so easy for guns to come in and drugs to come in. Right. And also uh, diseases to come in because right. everybody's not being checked. So, you know, this this is an agenda that obviously that has nothing to do with what, what they're saying. And without getting into politics, I know one thing. If those borders stay open, it's health risks across the board between drugs, violence, guns, and uh, criminals that are coming across. And they're allowing it for whatever reason, but to try to take the Second Amendment to another issue. Breaking down one amendment will just lead to another amendment being taken away. And, right, and chipping, really, chipping away little by little, right? Uh, and, and, and America's built on free, listen. No one's trying to get into Cuba. Everybody's trying to get out for a reason. Anybody that's handing away something to the black community is only trying to control the black community. And that means you're not trying to give them freedom. You're trying to take freedom. And when you want big government, that means less freedom. And that's very simple for anybody to understand. And I don't care what parties are pushing that agenda. Big government means less freedom. Right. And the more stringent they become, the less freedom we have. And when you're telling people you must do something, you're losing your freedoms and whether it's a mask because 1.3 million people die a year in a car accident you don't see anybody stop driving cars and i talk about politics and, and i'm not talking about left or right i'm just talking about freedom freedom and what's right there's a difference between left and right and, and freedom what is right and and as long as we're allowed free speech and we're allowed to talk and have opinions we're going in the right direction when they stop shutting us down we're going in the wrong direction. Yeah, and unfortunately, these big tech companies are very much uh, skirting that fine line of, you know, and and that's the problem because these politicians are bought and paid for by these big tech lobbyists. And so these big tech companies are allowed to get away with totally overstepping their boundaries. And something well, something really has to be done there. Well, when I'm talking to these young kids, I want job opportunities for them. Right. I want them to have freedom. I don't want them to have handouts if somebody's still controlling them. Right. And when Bernie Sanders or anybody else is sneaking communism in, they're, they're, they're sitting with millions of dollars. When they donate those millions and only keep themselves at 70000 or 60000 a year uh, pay, just like the rest of us on average pay. So, you know, this is a sales pitch to the, to, the, you know, to the young kids in the inner cities especially that don't know any better. And when I do these criminal talks and, and I work with the inner city kids, a lot of what I'm saying about crime also, also interacts with, you know, being a criminal on the street if you don't have the freedom to be or the ability to make serious money. I'm talking about legally. legally so if you right. have a job opportunity, maybe you'll never talk about selling drugs. If you have job opportunity, you won't talk about picking up a gun and robbing another drug deal, possibly killing them. So if you have those opportunities and those, and those those schools and, and the education systems open to you to choose where you want to go to school and where education, whether it's a trade or something else. Right. But when they take that and limit these kids, then yeah, I, I'm stepping in because I was one of those kids that was limited, not by choice, because of in the where I city, lived. Right. The zip code. Absolutely. So I, I, I hopefully when I'm doing like Mafia International, I'm talking about, by the way, in Mafia International, I talk about terrorism, guys that were terrorists that were in prison with me. I talk about the the uh, European drug uh, drug business from from the United States back and forth with me and Klaus 
mm-hmm. and we get it from their perspective. So it does interact with some of these talks I'm talking about, and Dan, that Dan and, and Mike that did the uh, Brownsville segment with me, that uh, we've done a couple of things together in, in Brownsville and in Brooklyn and some other areas with different guys that I mentioned before, Walter Beach the third who was a uh, Cleveland Brown, Brown. Mm-hmm. Jim Brown wrote the insert for his book. I did some talks with him. So some really uh, great guys and, and real leaders and success stories. Right. And, and their communities for communities. sure. Yes. Yeah. And those, and those communities need those guys, you know, because again, there's enough guys on the street that could influence those kids to go in the, in the opposite direction, the other path that you took, you know, there's enough yeah. of those guys in, in Brownsville, you know, they need them more, success stories to uh to, to speak to them you know yeah they're great gentlemen i gotta tell you mm-hmm. hard working day and night so right and, right and, and that's and that's part of you know it just depends on listen you need the right role models i had dave gentile that's been helping me for years now to you know that uh taught me to, to think differently act differently people are bothering me to overcome and and you know what the biggest thing of it all is to learn uh, humility and i learned a lot of humility Right. And I think that's my biggest lesson learned is guys that I want to say hello to a guy that calls me all the time. He's a construction guy that's involved. This guy, Steve. And there's another guy I always talk about, Adam. These guys are, are friends of mine that are always keeping me uh, in the right path. They call me as a friend and they give me that check to make sure I stay on my message. And, you know, those are the people that give me the strength to keep going and doing the right thing. And they deserve a lot of credit, too. I know your background in Tampa, you know, your activities in Tampa and uh, what you're doing now from what you were doing, you know, just a short 20 years ago. It's a, a night and day difference, you know. I appreciate it. I mean, it's a struggle. I get a young guy and I tell them anything that's worth is hard work. So, you know, every day you don't wake up and, and, and don't have a temper. You know, you have the same temper, but you just learn to to control it and do things in a different way so nothing good in life is easy so you got to work at it absolutely everybody all right bud well um are you going to be making uh are you going to be coming up to tampa on this trip yeah i I'm, i actually I, I got two more shows to do and you know after uh today's i, I got to go into uh fort lauderdale and, and, and palm beach mm-hmm. and uh after that i'm heading my way back and then i'm flying out to spain to start filming so i'll be there for a couple of weeks in morocco Cool. Well, I appreciate um, you having me on, and for the people that don't want to find me, true John A. Light is my Instagram. Right. John A. Light dot com is my website. John A. Light dot com, and uh, I'll, I'll put a link to all of your uh, sites on in the description box of the video. So for uh, those of you that want to, you know, a direct link to those, just look down in the description box, and I'll have those there. Just keep up with me and let me know, you know, everything that's going on, so I can help, you know, help plug it and just stay in the loop with you. I will. I appreciate it, Mike. I'll see you in the suite, probably. Hit me up so I can uh, hook up with you before you cut out. Okay. All right, Thank buddy. You. Talk to you soon. Have a good day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bye.